Good morning from Jerusalem. It's almost the end of uh, July 2022 and you can see how beautiful is Mount of Olives. Uh, you can see uh, the beautiful Church of Garden of Gethsemane, the Agony Church or Nation Church. Above it there are beautiful uh, Mary Magdalene, the Russian Church and the flag that you see in front of you is um, is actually tells us to the left of it is the tomb of Mary, the mother of uh, Jesus, Virgin Mary. And the walls of the city is not so far away from here, but before that you can see the uh, wall of the um, church of St. Stephen. And uh, it's a little bit connected to our story today, uh, mainly because um, I'm dedicated that tour for you, of course watching uh, the video and uh, please uh, subscribe my channel be my part of my family but I'm uh, dedicated it to a special person and I will talk about him in about a minute you can see the Latin cross that I bought for him um, you can see here the walls of the city this is part of the eastern wall of the city mainly from 16th century but it was based on walls from the time of King Herod. Um, I'm dedicated that uh, cross to Sir David J. Harding. This is the first time that I'm actually dedicated uh, anything to Sir except of Sir Elton John, which I must say I love. I never met any other Sir and here it is, and we do have a huge connection to so many things here in the city. Just to show you a little bit the tomb of Mary, what you can see is only the roof of it. The church that was above it being destroyed by the Muslims, but the tomb of Mary still exists. And before you will shout at me, yes, Mary was taken with her soul and with a body uh, to heaven by Jesus. But in between, the tomb was there. How should you gonna, how should you gonna have that as well? It's very easy. If you will reach the description, which is beneath that video, uh, you will see the link of my buy me a coffee. Or you can write buy me a coffee, Zahi Shaked, and you will reach. If not, please send me a message and I will send you the link for it. Very easy. Um, the deal is includes so many kinds of crosses and the Bible. Um, it includes the video that I'm taking, uploading to YouTube, just like the video that you're watching. And of course, I will send, send it to Sir David J. Harding from the UK. Look how beautiful is the Mount of Olives. You can see the Jewish cemetery there. We're climbing up through Jericho Road up to one of the eight gates of Jerusalem. But it's not easy to cross the street. Some people are driving here crazy. But you can see how beautiful is the, uh, uh, is the wall of the city. Behind it is the Aqsa Mosque. And, um, and uh, before that it was the Jewish temple. You can see the sign that takes you to the western wall. The Siloam, the Jewish Quarter, and Mount of Olives Cemetery. I cannot cross it. All right, I did it. We're heading to the Lion's Gate. And from there to the Via Dolorosa. Uh, we have to climb a little bit. This is the only gate that is open to the public from uh, the eastern part. Then it was the main way to 
uh, Mount of Olives. The main uh, uh, way to Jericho and the Dead Sea. It's called the Lion Gate, you're gonna, gonna see it soon. Uh, we, we are not sure why, but the legends say that uh, Suleiman the Magnificent who built it in the 16th century had a horrible dream and uh, and in his dream he saw lions eating, eating him alive mainly because he didn't build a wall around Jerusalem and that's what he did and one of the gates is called the Lion Gate there are so many names to uh, that gate St. Stephen, St. Etienne and this is the name of uh, our Templar um, so David is from dynasty of Templars and um, and he is a part of the family of St. Stephen, St. Etienne you saw uh, Mr. David you saw the um, Greek Orthodox uh, church that symbolized where the Jews stoned St. Stephen according to the book of Acts the current one is to the north of the city and the institute is called St. Saint, Saint Etienne Look up here, finish the gate. There are so many names to that gate. For example, um, uh, the tribe, tribe's gate, St. Mary Gate, remember the tomb of Mary is here and she was born very close to here. I will show you the area soon. Uh, the Kidron Gate. Garden of Gethsemane Gate, but now it's well known by the name of the Lion's Gate. This is the only time that someone conquered the city from here, from the east and not from the north, was in 1967 when the, when Israel came back to the old city, conquered it from the Jordanians. That city was supposed to be owned by United Nations, but it, it was occupied by the Jordanians until 1967. From 1967, it's part of Israel now. I don't know if you can see the lines, both sides of the gate. The other one is a little bit different, difficult to see. And let's go through the gate. Where are we? Let me show it to you. We are here. We just climbed that part of the street. We are just ne next to the Lion Gate. We will walk through the Via della Rosa to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. But you can see the Temple Mount, Haram al Sharif, is very close to us, and we will see one of the entrances to it. Look at the beautiful doors. If we will turn left, we will reach to one of the entrances of the Temple Mount of the Haram al Sharif. But only Muslims can enter through it. Non Muslims can enter to the Temple Mount twice a day, not including Friday and Saturday, but not from that gate. In that area, if you will excavate, I believe that you will find kind of another water system, a pool by the name Berichat Israel, 
Israel pool, <clears throat> but it was covered. But soon you will see another entrance to another pool. We are not going to enter it, but you will see it. We are already inside the city. There are two, although we are doing the Via della Rosa, there are some other uh, options here. For example, the birthplace of Virgin Mary, according to the um, Greek Orthodox. I uh, just took a video just uh, like a week ago, I took a video of it and you can actually watch it on my YouTube channel. I do have more than 20,000 videos. Then you can actually watch it. And Bethesda. Bethesda is where Jesus saw the um, just a moment, there's a car and I don't want to handicapped man that couldn't enter the pool again another pool and um, if I'm talking about that then we must uh, bless uh, Sir David um, J. Harding because he is uh, disabled and have trouble getting around then this is the best place everyone who watched that video please bless him just like Jesus blessed the man that was here for 38 years but couldn't enter to the water when the angel came. And this is not only Bethesda, Bethesda pools, um, the ship pool, it's um, more than that because according to the Catholic, we saw the Greek Orthodox Church report, Mary was born here, St. Anne um, Chapel, beautiful crusader church, and you can actually watch it through my videos. Sir um, David, actually tells us that he is coming from a knight family, a Templar knight, and descended of Stephen Harding, who later became Saint Etienne. One of two others share his bloodline. One of them is a pope, and the other one was a king. But what he actually say that and he repeated again and again and again, he's following Jesus' footsteps, Jesus' way without any uh, um, other way. This is his mission. And if I'm talking about the mission, let's talk about the 14th station that uh, happens at the Via Dolorosa. And we will visit most of them. The judgment place, we're gonna see it. He found guilty and uh, started to carry the cross to the Golgotha area. At the third station, he fell for the first time. Fourth station, he met his mother. Fifth station, Saint Simon helped him to carry the cross. Sixth station, uh, Saint uh, Veronica helped him by cleaning his face. He fell again at the seventh station. At the 8th station, he saw the women of Jerusalem that were crying because of him. And the um, ninth station, he fell for the third time. The 10th station, which is already inside the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, they took his clothes off and remembered the lottery. Nailing to the cross is another station. 
and then the crucifixion, the pieta, and the tomb of Jesus is the 14th station. I know that for some of you it's a little bit strange because when you are reading the Gospels, there are some uh, places that mention as is Via Dolorosa. <clears throat> but See, we can see a little bit of Saint, uh, the uh, rare entrance of St. Anne Church. See an ancient church, might be from the Roman time. But there's a tractor here, and we don't want to die today. And some of the stations are not mentioned in the Bible. At the 14th century, Babel Hutta, it's another entrance to the Temple Mount to Haram Sharif, but again, only for Muslims. It's a beautiful uh, place to visit. I took a video of Babel Hutta uh, neighborhood in the Muslim quarter, and uh, a lot of them are gypsies. Beautiful place to visit, totally not touristy. But we are going through the Lion's Gate. It. We are the tourists. There are tourists, but not a lot. Uh, look at the ancient floor. Might be from 3rd and 4th century. But we're going to see an earlier floor of the church soon. Then, at the 14th century, at the Franciscans, started to add more and more stories that were well known here but not part of the bible and at the end um, we had 14 stations um, through the history there were different stations but now we are following the last um, option or last uh, via Dolorosa or the well-known Via Dolorosa. Today, you can see here a beautiful building. This is the Muslim quarter, remember? Then it shows us, it tells us that one of the, those men who lives here did the Hajj, went to Mecca. And they decorated his house. And just like you, Sir David, got a title, they got a title too. The one who went to Hajj, to make the Hajj, is now called Hajj. Let's say if his name was David, then it will be Hajj Dawood. King Faisal Street, and another entrance to Masram Khan, to the temple. I love that man. And when he was at the fifth station, okay. <laughs> um, I used to buy so many things from him, and he used to prepare the best co iced coffee in the city. But now we moved to a different place, and there's no iced coffee at the fifth station of the Via de la Rosa, except of the memory of uh, Let's run away. Oh, all right, nothing. It wasn't so big. Except of uh, Saint Simon who helped Jesus to carry the cross. Then we're still at the Lion's Gate Street because the Via del Rosa didn't start it yet. It's like 19 minutes before we are starting the Via del Rosa. According to what we believe uh, and according to excavation, that place used to be the Antonia. When King Herod built the temple, he wanted to be sure that everyone will listen to him. Then by controlling the temple, by building a fortress next to it that can actually, from there you can see everything that happened in the Jewish temple. He, um, 
he actually gain the thing that he want to control, to control, to control. And that's called the Antonia. From time to time I'm getting some messages that the Western Wall was the Antonia. Um, I don't want to say anything bad about those people. I'm sure that they were indeed who studied something else. But the Antonia, according to every source, was at the northern part of the city. We believe, according to the Via de la Rosa, that that is where Jesus, that is where Jesus was charged uh, by Pontius Pilate. Sadly, through the years it became to be a Muslim place and today it's a Muslim elementary school. Then the Christians cannot go there freely every moment and they cannot build anything connected to the story of Jesus. Then they built the first and the second station to the right of it. But I want you to understand that the regional place is right here. It used to be here. What you see here is new things. Um, if you are doing the Western Wall tour, tunnels, the Western Wall tunnel tours, you will end it there, that it actually shows you that it used to be uh, part of the Western Wall, part of the Jewish temple. We will enter to the first and the second station. The Via del Rosa, as today, is uh, owned by the Franciscans and the Catholic. One of the ladies told me that I'm speaking too fast. I'm not sure that it's true, but if I'm speaking too fast, <coughs> then I'm Sorry, well, let's enter to the first church. Uh, what we found here before uh, we built that new church um, is a crusader church. We don't know what they dedicated it to, but we found the base of it. And Berlucci, when he built the new church, he built it according to the um, crusader church. The Church of the Flagellation. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twist, twisted together a crown of thorn and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And then they slapped him, slapped him uh, in the face. That's for Gospel of uh, John 19, 1 to 3. Then what we see here is the church from 1929, built by the amazing Berlucci. And uh, usually I'm not speaking inside the church, but there's no one here, then I can do that. But let me bless your cross here as well. This part is amazing. Look at that crown. In the middle one, in the middle you can see um, like heaven. And outside you can see the blood tears. This is the two natures of Jesus. Here you can see Barabbas. Remember that Jews, they had to decide who to let go. Oh, wait a minute. And they decided to spare the life of Barabbas. It is a little bit strange for me that the cruz the Pontus Pilate, which wasn't a nice person according to reality, uh, set free the one who killed people. He was a murderer. But another thing that you must know, the word Barabbas, which every Christian knows by heart, 
it's um, will sound you will sound strange to you. The son of the father. This is the meaning of it in English. Bar Abba Bar, the son, Abba, father. The other side you can see Pontius Pilate washing his hands. I'm the innocent guy, I didn't want to do that. And Jesus, right here in front of you. Beautiful, isn't it? Such an amazing church. An event. I'm still the only one. Uh, it's not because there are no tourists. You will see the tourists soon. It's because it's very early. I uh, left the house in Tel Aviv at 5 a.m. Uh, because it's so hot today. And I wanted to be here before it's going to be terrible. But guys, it's already hot. Let's go to see the second station. From here you can see <coughs> the Antonia. <coughs> Sorry. You can see the chapel. It was built in 1904. But it was based on um, the same idea, uh, another church from the 12th century, and even less than that. When Pilate heard these words, he brought Jesus out and seated him on a charge bench in the place called Stone Pavement, in Hebrew, Gavota. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what it's called the place of the skull in Hebrew, Golgotha. And that is from John 19, 13, 16, and 17. Let's go into it. Look how beautiful it is. Wait a minute, no, 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 no. Oh, sorry, 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 it's a new Kimball. I'm trying to understand it. Can you feel the agony? Can you understand what's happened to his mother at the same moment? Look at that. Almost fell. Let me remind you, Jesus fell three times. It's not in the Bible, but the idea that Mary, the mother, was there, trying to be next to her son. This is something that I think every father and every mother can understand. But, well, yeah. But it's beautiful to see that John, and the disciple and Mary Magdalene is trying to hide the scenery from the mother. Now what I'm standing almost fell is that kind of stone which is just here. And for seven years we thought that those stones are from um, Jesus' time. 
what we actually found out lately that this is from the time of Adrian, Caesar Adrian, the second century. But even in the second century, um, the soldiers been here. How do I know it? Let's look at that. You can see here a game that was played by soldiers while they were waiting for something to happen. It might be a judgment place. You know, it takes time until they find him guilty or not. And then in that case, you can see here a Roman soldiers came. Then even if it's from the second century pavement, <coughs> sorry, still you can see here games of soldiers. Then I'm almost sure that that was a place that was um, that was um, organized here um, by the Romans. Let's continue our tour. We started from the first and second station and we are blessing the cross of a special person, Sir David J. Harding. And he is two years uh, younger than me. <clears throat> and you know that I celebrate my 60th birthday like uh, two weeks ago, something like that. And he asked me to tell him what's the difference, and there are no differences yet. And I'm happy for it. Um, to be 60 years old is uh, to be with a lot of knowledge, and I will always continue studying. Then it's like endless, 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 endless study. I reading the Bible and so many research book about. Christianity, Judaism, and Islam. And that's the entrance to Dantonia. What we believe is that there were 12 stairs yeah. to the temple, to the Antonia, but it was taken by St. Helen that came to see where Jesus is to the Vatican. And you can actually see the original stairs there. Another beautiful thing that you can see in front of you belongs to um, the Sisters of Notre Dame, the Sion, which is a beautiful place to visit, but not today. And the beautiful arch that you see in front of you, called Etch Homo, uh, is part of their um, nunnery. And what we believe is that here, um, Pontus Pilate was standing and washing his hands, but we know that it was built all by, all for uh, Adrian in the second century, and it's kind of a triumph arch that was built for him. And, but it's a beautiful story. Lots of tractors today. Let's see the arch from the other side. That line.
to in a way part of their nunnery of sister of the sisters. Thank you. I know, you know. Thank you very much. And we will go to see the arch. Can you see the small arch here? This is the arch that you saw now, and this is the arch that um, uh, you saw outside. Now, that tool of the Via Dolorosa is dedicated to everyone who watched that video, but mainly to one person, which is a sir from the Template Knight family, and his name is. Sir David J. Harding from the UK and the deal is I'm buying the cross for him and you can do the two and have versus uh, different kind of crosses and holy books or the Bible and I'm preparing a video for him uploading to YouTube that's why you actually see it and at the end you will get it home then in that case, go to buy me a coffee. Link at the description of that video, or just write me a message, and uh, I will um, send you the link for it, and you will have it as well. Let's continue, please. The road will take us to the third and the fourth station, but on the way, I'm not sure that it will be open, uh, we will be able uh, to see some other place, but sadly it's closed. But this is the prison of Christ, according to the Greek Orthodox. I do have a video of it, then you can actually watch it on my YouTube channel. And um, don't forget to subscribe my channel as well. If you want to help me in another way, then uh, in the description there's a link for PayPal as well. You can actually buy the uh, support me by that, or you can buy the crosses through there if it's easier for you. That part belongs to. Armenian, but most of the Armenians that you know are Orthodox. This is a Catholic, Greek, uh, sorry, a Catholic Armenian uh, guest house, monastery, and a church. And soon you will see the connection between it to the Via Dolorosa stations. To the right, you can see another place that it's uh, not less than a mast. This is the Austrian Hospice, and if you will climb on top of it, on to, uh, to the roof of it, you will be able to see one of the most beautiful views of the city. It will cost you five shekels, you need a coin for that, worth it. I will show you where is the entrance to it. That's the entrance. The Austrian Hospice and just ring the bell. They will open the door for you. And we reach the third station of the Via Dolorosa. This is where Jesus fell for the first uh, time, but you can see here um, pavement road from the time of second temple time. It used to be at uh, three meters, nine feet beneath the floor, but they excavated and uh, now you can see it a little bit from second century, a uh, second temple time. In that case, Jesus died. Maslom Khan, Third and fourth stations. This is where Jesus fell for the first time. 
you will recognize the Via de la Rosa stations by that kind of floor and the run plate with a number on it and lately they added um, an image of what's happened here and this is the fourth station here you can see the same idea and the third station that belongs to the Armenian Catholic the fourth station is not mentioned in the Bible as well, but believe me, the mother of Jesus was next to him every inch of the path. How do I know it? Because I had um, a Jewish mother and she died last August. Next week, we're going to visit her tomb in Israel. And although she wasn't easy, she took care of every child of her. And, but I'm, I'm sure that every woman, Christian, Muslim, or Jewish woman, will be next to um, a son, a son, sorry, um, in a horrible time. They will try to protect him, to be with him until the last moment. This is something that I'm not sure that people without children can understand the agony of the mother. See, it's early then. Some of the shops are still closed. We're still in the Muslim quarter. Fifth station is where Saint Simon helped Jesus to carry the cross. He was forced to help Jesus to carry the cross. Saint Simon was from Libya of today. What he did in the city, from for me, it's obvious. Three times a year, every Jew had to be here. Oh, there's a monk, a Franciscan monk, that had a third house. And um, then it was one of the three festivals, Passover. That's why Jesus was in the city, not because of Easter. Easter is because of Jesus. And um, then uh, to find a Jew from Libya, it was, um, how should I say, oh, yes. Then St. Simon was forced to help Jesus to carry the cross because Jesus felt dizzy at that time. There's a stone here that will mark something very special according to what we believe. Um, Jesus was touching that stone and he couldn't breathe. Then Saint Simon helped him to carry the cross. Then everything that you see here, it's from the time of Jesus. Uh, maybe his handprint. The rest is not because it's been destroyed by the Muslims. Um, then in the 19th century, they built it again. But what left from here is the most important part of it this time. Then we are heading up to the sixth station. Let's talk about the sixth station. The sixth station is Saint Veronica. She was standing outside and she saw Jesus climbing up. And she took a veil and cleaned his face. When she entered to her house, she realized that uh, the face of Jesus was printed on it. Before we will continue, I want to see another important place. This is the Arab Blind Association workshop. It's beautiful to see here uh, the art, the art that they are preparing, and this is only a small part of it. Then you can enter and buy it and um, help them to 
understand that they are part of society. Look, a beautiful is that balcony. Because they are part of society. Also think about Jesus curing a blind man at the ceiling pool. Um, and he say that it's not the fault of, of the mother and the father and the child. It's actually a mission that uh, he's got from uh, his father, from God. And um, it's, it's such an amazing uh, to understand that it's from darkness to light. And that is uh, from the book of John. Darkness to light. Now he knows the, knows the truth. The blind man knew that Jesus is Son of God. It's a little bit noisy there. They're cleaning the a sixth a, a station. Then uh, we'll talk about it here. Uh, St. Veronic was invited by um, the Romans by the Pope to uh, Rome and the uh, veil is there curing the people and once you hear the Pope goes out with it. He, um, some people believe that the woman was the same woman with the blood issue uh, of uh, Jesus. But for me she is such a saint woman because she is the only one in those 14 stations that help Jesus voluntarily. She wasn't forced to do that. And she needed the enemies of walking with Jesus, the Romans soldiers. And they could crucify her too. Then we will see a column. But we don't want to fall again. Hey, hey, hey. מה שלומך? אמדלילה. זה מדהים אותי שאתה אוהב כל כך הרבה ניקיון, ואני מעריץ אותך. זה כאילו... The beautiful thing here is that he's actually taking care of other places. His shop is one of those. And um, he's cleaning now this street. That part of the street used to fall so many times. Lately they renovated it. Then it's less problematic. And he is a good man. Then we're heading to the seventh station, which is open, and we will enter. Uh, that's what Jesus fell for the second time. But more important than that, we know that the crucifixion place was outside the city. The Bible mentioned it. Uh, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre the place that most of the Christians believe that Jesus was crucified there, um, died, and buried and resurrected. So many people know, I mean, everyone knows it, that it was outside the city. Then as we believe, the judgment, play, judgment uh, gate was right here. And when we go outside, we reach the seventh station, of the cross, it will be already uh, outside the city. Today, it's, the church is surrounded with a wall. It's um, uh, in the Times Square of Jerusalem. But you must understand, the Church of the Holy Sepulchre of today was a little bit different than the Church of the Holy Sepulchre uh, from, let's say, fourth century. And it was different than the city from the time of Jesus. Now we are living uh, the city in a way. And but today it's the main street. If until now you saw a little bit of people, now you will see more. 
if you will excavate it, you will find the ancient city from second century. But before that, let's go in to the seventh station. Boker Tov, Beseder. Good morning. Oh, so clean here. And look at the column here. This is in situ column from second century from the main street that was built here. We know it by the name De Cardo, in the heart of the city. Oh, you have to smell that place to understand that it's so clean. Then Jesus here fell for the second time. Where we are now, this is the name of the street, Han Azit. And then we will turn right immediately to the aid station to see where the women of Jerusalem was crying when they saw Jesus on his, on his way uh, to the cross. But he actually looked at them and said, this is only the beginning. You're gonna suffer a lot. Then you have to cry of that. You have to cry out of the people who didn't believe in me. The eighth station, you will see here a stone. And on it, you will see the name Christus and Nika. Oops, victory, almost. <laughs> this is my second time that I almost fell. And I have no reason to for Jesus had so many reasons to fall. Then here it is. Nika, Ichtus, and a cross. It's right here. Eighth station of the cross. We are now on the way to the ninth station because of that beautiful monastery. We cannot go straight to the mine station that we have to make a run tour. If you are Catholic, you know that uh, from the 17th century, but mainly from the 19th century, in each ch Catholic church, you will find the 14 stations. Uh, it might be with a symbol of a cross or the painting of every uh, station. Um, but here we are walking through it together with Sir David J. Harding. Um, it's difficult for him to walk than I'm as foot now. I'm walking with him, together with Jesus, together with uh, Saint Simon, together with Saint Veronic, on the way to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. He wrote me, and this is this is different from uh, some of you that uh, ask me to uh, buy the crosses for them. He gave me a lot of information. Then, although I'm not sharing everything that he said, um, I'm trying to to do that physically. Did you subscribe my channel? Not yet. Please do that. Uh, it makes me happy to see that people, more and more people, are watching it. And if you do have some questions, don't hesitate. And I want you to see the man who's carrying out two crosses. Uh, he's going back to the first uh, station. Uh, how are you? Good morning. 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 Good 
Early morning, you say no, it was one group, but they were, they asked to carry two crosses because they, they are uh, serving uh, Jesus with all of their heart. And I must say that my sir, or the sir, they said David, is doing it too. And I know that he's spending a lot to help the others. And what he asked me to uh, uh, spread is peace, no violence. Peace. No violence. And I wish that everyone will study from him. And I wish I will be just like you in that matter. Um, that used to be the entrance. Not that one, but here it used to be the entrance to the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. Today it's totally not as big as it used to be at the 4th century when St. Helen came and built it. This is one of the first churches that were built in the world, if not the first one together with the Nativity Church and Paternoster on top of Mount of Olives. Um, all of those churches that I mentioned are in my uh, YouTube channel. You can actually look for it. We're climbing up to the roof of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre, but let's talk about it. The church is not like a regular church. The church belongs to everyone, almost everyone mainly to the Catholic, Greek, Orthodox, Armenian, but you will find Egyptian there, Ethiopians there, from the Church of Syria, the Assyrian Church, um, the Protestants, some of them, believe that that is not the site of the church because it's, out, it's inside the walls that they looked outside the walls and next to the Damascus Gate, you can visit the other option, it's called the Garden Tomb. You can find it video in my YouTube channel as well. But uh, I want you to know that there are two options. The white dome there is the Jewish quarter, it's a synagogue. We just left the Muslim quarter and we entered to the Christian quarter. And in front of you, you can see the two domes of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then let's continue. We're heading to the ninth station of the cross, and as I already mentioned, then that church is divided to so many, and there are a lot of problems between the uh, said it, different kind of orders, Christian orders, and uh, as Sir David said, no violence. Let's talk. Let's find a solution. And, and today, I must say, from the, mainly from the uh, uh, British time, Monday time, there's kind of a status quo agreement. You, they, now everyone knows what to do and what not, what's theirs, but not what, uh, what not. But still, they have a lot of conflicts. We are the Egyptian part of the church. Look how beautiful it is. Wait. Mm -hmm. Beautiful picture to take. You can see the two domes of the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Then we are living now the Coptic Orthodox Patriarch of Jerusalem, St. Anthony Coptic Monastery, which I never visit, I must say. Monday I will. And just for the information, in Queen Helen Church, you can visit uh, Queen Helen water system, which is a beautiful water system. Uh, we believe that Queen Helen used it, that it's right there, but don't forget to leave the donation for the church. And we are living now the Coptic entering to the Ethiopian. Where the tourists, you saw a few of them, but most of them will be downstairs because not a lot knows about that roof. It's called Deir el Sultan, and that's where the uh, Ethiopian are 
uh, living. The construction is mainly above the Greek Orthodox Church. One day it will be ready, although it looks almost ready now, I must say. And that olive tree, and you can see the olive fruit on it, is very important to our story. According to the Ethiopians, this is where um, Abram almost sacrificed Isaac. And there's a huge connection between that and that. Because um, Jesus came to complete, to end that story, to, um, to take our sins, um, to make us pure. And I believe that you, David, Sir David Harding, you are pure, at least according to what you say. I will be more than happy to know. Now, so you know, and you're part of the family right now. I know that you're watching my videos. You wrote so many good things about me. I'm so happy, but I'm not the important one. The important one is it's you. The important one is the information, is the video. Then, uh, the um, Ethiopians believe that there are a creation of a visit between Queen Shiva to King Solomon. And, um, wow, it's one hour video. Ooh, I might divide it into two, then you will have uh, uh, three videos. One of all everything, all the information. The other one will be until we reach the Via del Rosa, and then the third one will be the Via del Rosa. Wow, one hour. I'm talking a lot. But this is mostly the only place that I can talk. The rest of the places, it's yes, no. Yes, no, yes, I'm gonna dish the, yes, I will make the laundry, yeah, I will fall, yeah, I will do that, I will take the garbage out. Then in that case, a creation between Queen Shiva and King Solomon, and nine months later, the first Ethiopian was born. He came to here when he was 20, to meet his father that looks like him, different color, but looks like him, and his father gave him the Ten Commands, the Ark of the Covenant. Then in every church, Orthodox Ethiopian church, you will see that it's divided into two. The hidden part is where the Ark of the Covenant, of course, the replica of it, and only the high priest can enter to it, just like the high priest in the Jewish temple. And the other one is for the um, disciples. You will see, you will see many the disciple area. Uh, there are two churches, and we're going to go through those two. But now I have to take out the hat that I got from uh, a very close friend of mine, one of my subscriber. Um, actually, it was owned by EJ, her husband. And this is on by Betty, and uh, she sent it to me as a present. I love you, Betty. It's so nice to know that I do have so many new family members, and you can be part of it. Then let me organize myself. Then let's enter now to the two Ethiopian churches, and soon you will see that we are standing in front of the facade of the church of the Holy Sepulchre. Uh, I'm going to bless it in three places, inside the church, uh, morning inside the church but I'll try to be quiet uh, in, the, in the first church you will see a painting of uh, Queen Shiva visiting King Solomon please take care of your head when you're entering here it's very low let's get used to the darkness
Welcome to the Church of the Holy Sepulchre. Now they are renovating um, the floor of the church. It took them two, two men years uh, to understand that we must do that, and now they are doing it. This is the famous facade of their Church of the Holy Sepulchre. The station of the cross is there when they stripped him from his clothes. But let's climb up to the Golgotha to see where she's taking a picture. I don't want to disturb her. Until then, you can see the columns. It looks like a little bit like the Jewish temple. And a graffiti from 1930. Uh, 1389 or 84 and because we are dealing with a UK guy that right here you can find a tomb of uh, uh, another knight a British one I forgot his name I always forget his name I don't know why but he actually signed one of the persons who signed the Magna Carta. Then let's climb up to the Golgotha. The Golgotha belongs to the Greek Orthodox and the Catholic. We are entering through the Catholic area. Isaac, here it is. You can see it here too. That's where they made Jesus to, his, to the cross. And it's such an amazing idea because when he Died, he had a shout, Abba, Abba, Lama Shavaktami, Abba, Abba, Lama Zavtami. Why did he leave me? And then, remember what's happened? Uh, earth shake. And um, the, the curtain of the temple been destroyed. And Linguinius, a Roman soldier who touched, used a, a spear. Uh, said, this is the Son of God. Then from that moment, as I said, Christianity or the New Judaism became to be owned by everyone, not by the Jews anymore. This is part of the Pieta, but let's stand in the line. Because it's empty now, let's first bless the cross. Until then, you can see the gold water, the bedrock. John, Jesus. And his mother, when Jesus was on the cross, he asked John to take care of his mother. Let's enter. Then 
this was the this is the crucifixion site. And that was the Pieta. I didn't I couldn't speak. Um, he saw um, Mary with a spear in the heart, which is right there. That nun was praying there. And uh, now let's go to see the tomb of Jesus. So, the Golgotha, the Calvary skull, before he was buried, they purified his body by Joseph of Ramitia and the Gavinus who gave their tomb to him. And according to what we believe, this is the stone, and everyone is blessing everything that they brought from home or they bought, because this is where the naked body of Jesus. Now, the tomb is supposed to be a cave. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to behave. Then, it was supposed to be like a cave. That's how the Jesus used to be buried. It's, sorry. The rich one. On the way you can see Armenian chapel, later on I will light candles for you, the one who asked me to do that. And not a lot of people waiting in the line for the tomb, but the tomb is not a cave anymore because it's been destroyed a few times. I cannot enter with a video into the tomb, then in about two minutes I will end that video and I will enter with a cross to bless it there, just to show you what we can see. Then you can see the tomb, the two chapels there, the first one. is with a candle, you can see the candlelight. And the second one is the tomb itself. <laughs> Here they are already finished to excavate beneath the floor to see uh, what they can actually find. A little bit blocking it, I don't know if you can see a little bit from there. Difficult to see, but the, but the excavating the floor beneath the tomb. We will end our tour here. Uh, this is the fifth station from Yeldo. There are already all, uh, only 14 station. That is where Mary Magdalene. So Jesus, after the resurrection, then in that case, thank you for being with me. Uh, the one who reached the end of that video, it's one hour, 14 minutes, 15 minutes, please write me something. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.